Thank you very much. And I don't know how long we'll keep this as an annual thing. Maybe we'll just kind of get it all done, and then we won't have to talk about it anymore. Um, thank you. I'm Casey Schaufler. I've been a Linux, uh, well, a kernel developer, starting on Unix in the 1970s. Worked uh, primarily on supercomputers in the 1990s. Uh, did the SMAC Linux security module, and I've been spending the past couple of years working on uh, security module stacking. So what is a Linux security module and why do we care? Uh, what a Linux security module consists of is a set of uh, hooks that you can implement for various, various places in the kernel to make additional access control decisions uh, to go along with the normal access control decisions that the kernel is going to be making uh, for traditional access controls. The reason why we have a, an infrastructure for this rather than just an implementation uh, is that early on um, we managed to make Linus a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that we couldn't agree on what it was we wanted to do. Uh, after a point where he, he shouted out, you security people are insane, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Just give me an infrastructure and... Uh, that way I don't have, to, you guys can do whatever you want. I don't have to worry about it. Um, a security module stack is a collection of Linux security modules. That makes it really easy. Um, and they get called in order. And we have what we call a bail on fail policy. So the first security module that says, I don't like this, don't do it, uh, stops the execution, um, re returns to the, uh, the system, returns the error, and then uh, access is denied. No, no further processing is done. That's important. We'll, we'll come back to that later. So we have two kinds of security modules today. And one is a minor module. Minor modules have the aspect they don't maintain any, any state. So they make their decisions based on the information that's readily available at that time. They don't keep track of anything. They just make a minor change, make a change. For example, what's in a path name? Um, is this an inode? Or is this inode a symlink? Is it a directory? You know, that kind of information. Uh, a major security module will actually maintain state about the system. It'll maintain its own attributes, uh, attributes about, you know, for example, SC Linux will contain, keep a file context on every file a process context. Um, in order to achieve this, we have a system whereby most of the kernel, major kernel data structures have a, a pointer to what we call a security blob. And each of the major modules can use these security blobs to contain their information. Uh, we also have a mechanism called NetLabel, which allows you to set uh, CIPSO and Calypso security options on IP packets, and we have a thing called SecMarks, which are used in some of the other networking mechanisms to transfer security information attributes along with the packets as they're going along within the system. So, as of 4.18, we have a mechanism for stacking where we can go use all the minor modules we want, and then one of the major modules. Uh, we do that because we've got a problem where we've only got one pointer in each of these major security, uh, one of these major data structures, and so we can only have one set of information because, of course, each of these modules wants to manage that information themselves. So the first stumbling block here is our blob pointers. This is the thing that makes it so you, we have to, or we would have a security module stack that would fall down if we actually ran all the, the modules together. Um, so the security blob usage is actually pretty uniform. Uh, it turns out that SE Linux and SMAC use them all. Uh, Tomoyo only uses the credential blob, and AppArmor uses the credential blob, and the file blob, and the socket blob, and the task blob. Now, AppArmor is unique in using the task blob for now, but we'll see that change as time goes on. So with this set of blobs, obviously uh, if, if AppArmor and SMAC or AppArmor and SE Linux want to use the same blob, they can't because they're pointing to the same place. So the resolution to this is actually fairly simple. Uh, we should have thought of it years ago. And that is that rather than having the individual security modules 
manage the blobs themselves. They just tell the uh, security infrastructure how much space they want in each of the blobs. And the, mod and the infrastructure you know, keeps track of what everybody wants and tells them where within the blob they should find their information. So very, very straightforward there. Okay. So if we go ahead and do this, um, this solves all the problems, right? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> if, we, if we do the infrastructure managed blobs, we can pull uh, Tomoyo out of the, out of the list of uh, sh shared ones. But the rest of them, we still have, have more issues here. Um, well, what, what else could be the problem here, right? Well, the next assembly block are something called SEC IDs. Um, in the original s security module architecture, um, there are a number of interfaces that use a 32-bit integer as a representation of the security information. And this is very convenient. You can pass it around. You can put it in, into a, a network packet and yeah, network um, information, and it just goes around. And then when it comes back to the security module, security module looks it up, goes and uses that. But when you've got multiple security modules using it, you've got 32 bits. And if each of the security modules wants 32 bits to represent their security information, you've got a problem. You've got the, the 10 pounds of flour on a five pound bag. So what we have to do then is come up with a way to get more information available for all of the security modules. Um, we have a set of interfaces that use the security modules. Uh, for example, if you're doing the audit system, uh, it takes the security, the SEC ID that it gets passed and it uses that to look up then the text string that it wants to print when it creates the audit record. Well, again, if you've only got 32 bits and you've got more than that information from the security modules, you can't really use that. Uh, so what are you going to do? Well, what well, obvious thing you're going to do is you're going to replace this 32-bit entity with a bigger entity. Um, it's called struct. Uh, I've called it a struct sec IDs. It could be called anything else. Uh, and you provide an entry in each of, in this structure for each of the security modules that actually uses it. Uh, if you're not going to use stacking, you don't really want to have that overhead. So instead of having a structure, you have a union. And in the union, so when it actually gets created, you actually still have a 32-bit quantity. And so you're back to where you were if you're not doing stacking. And that's kind of an important thing. We don't want to put excessive overhead in place where we don't have to. Um, but when you do this, you're going to have to identify which of these entities in the structure sec IDs you're going to want to use when you have a sec ID. Well, if you're within the security module, that's easy. You just use your own. So if you're in SE Linux, you use the, 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 the point SE Linux. If you're in SMAC, you use the point SMAC, and everybody's happy. Um, if you're in NetFilter, uh, NetFilter actually has a, a mode set up so that you, you can identify which security module you're going to use. Currently, the only one that's defined is SE Linux, and actually uh, SMAC just piggybacks on this uh, in an inappropriate fashion. So we have to add a, an entry for SMAC, so SMAC can, can do it as well. But at this point, you're going to, yeah, because you've got the, the differentiation available in the structure, you can identify which one that's going to go to. And if you're not doing stacking, it'll all just go into the same one. And it won't matter because you're not stacking. Uh, if you're looking at the attributes on a process, for example, if you're using SO PeerSec, you're going to need some way to identify which one you want. Now, one of the early ideas was, well, we'll just take all of them and we'll, we'll, <clears throat> we'll make a big long string that's got all of the security module names in it and we'll differentiate it, we'll put them in a comma separated list and we'll parse it and everybody will be happy. And that got really, really, really ugly and is 100% um, not backward compatible. So instead we're working with the notion of, I'm going to have what we call a display LSM I'm going to set it on a, on a per, per process basis. And I'm going to say, this is the LSM I want you to tell me about. And if I don't set it, it's just going to use the first one, which is going to be SE Linux. So I can come in and I can say, when I 
when I want to use SO PureSec, I'm going to see about SE Linux, or I'm going to see about SMAC, or I'm going to see about AppArmor when AppArmor gets there, or whatever security module you want to use, so long as you tell it which one it is, it'll give you that information. Uh, so if we introduce the struct sec IDs then, we can actually pull AppArmor out of our list as well. So then, um, the only thing you can't do is run SMAC and SE Linux at the same time. Well, why not? I was like, well, haven't we solved all the problems yet? Well, not quite. Uh, the first stumbling block we've got to, to, to work with here are mount options. Currently, the way the, the mount code is set up, it will call into the, uh, the security code and say, if, if you find an option you don't know about, give me an error. Well, if you've got SMAC and SE Linux running at the same time, they both have mount options. Uh, so if you say mount dash O sec label and SMAC FS root equals star, SE Linux is going to say, I don't know about this SMAC FS root, root option. I got to return an error. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to untrain these, these security modules to report an error if they don't see an option. This does lead us to a problem whereby, now if there's an option that neither of them recognizes, they're not gonna report an error. So we do have a little bit of an issue there with, with error reporting, with possibili the possibility of an invalid option getting passed. Uh, and we have to have separate mount, mount option structures for each of them, because each of the, the security modules, because again, they're maintaining information about the mount, um, mount information, the mount state. The current mount uh, infrastructure code is a little bit baroque, uh, but the good news is David Howells is working on a new scheme, which is even more baroque, but which solves all these problems. So we have one of those wonderful situations where we have to choose between baroque and baroquean. Uh, sorry. And that's not our last stumbling. That's not our last stumbling block. block. But hopefully, that's the worst joke I tell today. <laughs> okay. So the next stumbling block is is net label. Uh, as I as I mentioned before, net label is a mechanism whereby well, we can put a network packet, put an IP header, sorry, put an IP option into the IP header for packets to, to, to provide information about the security of the process that's sending the packet. And this is great. Uh, we get one SIPSO tag because that's the, the current implementation. We probably could uh, convince Paul with a... It's a standard, right? <laughs> no, standard. multiple tags. Okay, yeah, okay, I won't be able to convince them then. We get one tag, fine. So what that means is that if the security, you've got two security modules that want to use this, they're gonna have to agree on what information can go in that packet. Uh, that might not be as simple as it sounds. Uh, for one thing, one of the things that's interesting about the net label system that's kind of different from the rest, the way the rest of the, the security infrastructure works is that the security modules push their data for net label, whereas all the, the other interfaces pull the information out of the security modules. So when you create a socket, you send the, infra, send the label information you want to the socket, or when you change the attribute information on on a process, you send that to the socket. As opposed to when the packet gets ready to be sent, you pull the information. So that's a bit different. The other thing that's a bit different here is that you're not putting any, an abstracted or, or module specific information out onto the socket. You're putting what's going to go out onto the network into the socket. This is very efficient. And it makes it a lot better, a lot faster when you're actually going to send the packet. But it makes it more difficult to do anything resembling a compromise 
or a computation or uh, let's work this out amongst ourselves kind of situation. And in the end, you may not actually use what, the label that you actually pushed out to the socket. Why is that? I hear you cry. Uh, NetLabel allows you to configure individual networks, individual hosts, um, to have specific, specific characteristics about how the labeling is going to work on those networks, or to particular hosts for that matter. Uh, SE Linux, by default, works with unlabeled networks. Typically, it uses policy to define how you're going to talk between processes uh, where, where that are coming from unlabeled networks. Smack, on the other hand, wants to use labeled networks wherever possible because it wants to get the information about the process wherever possible so that it can actually make a decision. And it will specify specific Smack labels as be, being the ones to use when you encounter an unlabeled packet or that will be sent out unlabeled. These are very different, different philosophies. The other thing about SC Linux is SC Linux will send, will do the labeling based solely on the MLS and M MCS components. It won't use the roles um, the, uh, or, or the other information that it, that it has. Entirely true. Unless you use tag type six. No. No. Back. Yeah, that's. Okay, yeah, loopback, all uh, right, okay. Paul has corrected me that loopback is a special case. Yeah. Uh. Hmm? Uh, not there yet. Nope. I, IPsec is, is a different. IPsec's non-standard, and it's. It's a different creature. Talk, talk to me after, it's a mess. <laughs> Don't use labeled IPsec, it's a train wreck. <laughs> okay. And Paul said it. Okay. So the other thing, and the other thing you can do is you can, if, if you've specified labeling on a particular interface, uh, you're not going to actually resolve what label you're going to use until you actually put the packets together. Uh, and that, that's going to take and going to go through net filter. So the network can, net label configuration can actually be relatively complicated. It can make it very difficult for you to determine what labeling you're going to want to use for any given packet. Or for, you know, when, when any, any given process wants to send a packet, and it may depend on where it's going. Uh, the other issue that uh, comes, across, comes up fairly quickly is granularity. The granularity, or rather, the smack label of a process and the SE Linux context of a process are not going to be in lockstep. If they were, what are you doing running both of them? Pick one, because that's going to be, a, you know, be your ma really your major factor is what label or, label or context is the process running with at this time. That's what you're really going to be concerned about. Uh, the other thing is that we may be changing the label on, on, to be used on a socket, in, in the SMAC case at least after the socket has been created. So SE Linux doesn't do that. SE Linux leaves the, the same label on the, on the packet at all times. It doesn't, you don't have a mechanism to change it. So given these, you know, these factors here, the chance that you're going to get the packets to be, get the, the two security modules to agree on what the label should be at any given time is really pretty low. So the expectation that that's, this would work for these two security modules in particular isn't very likely. But let's just say that you're okay with that. And so long as they do agree, you're going to, you're, you'll go along with it. Okay, well then where are we? Well then we're actually in a case, in a situation where you can run all, this, all the minor security modules we have today and all the major security modules we have today at the same time. You're not going to get a whole lot of performance on the network. Um, you can, con you, there are configuration things you can do, um, especially with SMAC configuration. You can spec, rather than using what SMAC would use by default for labeling processes, 
based on for, for putting in the IP packet based on the label. You can specify it. So you could actually put what SC, you know, your best guess of what SC Linux would do into the packet. And you get some of them out of there. But OK, so uh, what does this leave us with? Her? Now, you know, what can still cause problems at this point? Well, one of the things that can cause problems is redundant purpose. Um, and we've been saying, yeah, we've been saying this all along. You don't want to use Smack and SE Linux at the same time. They they really do too much of the similar thing. If you if you can't figure out how to do what you want to do in Smack in addition to what you want to do in SE Linux, you're probably not thinking hard enough. Simil similarly, the other direction. If you if you want to use SE Linux to do just one specific thing that you think you can't do with Smack, you probably need to think a little harder. Um, you probably don't want to do this, but you do want to use Smack or SE Linux and AppArmor together because they do very different things. Uh, if you want the, the path name based access control that you get from AppArmor for whatever reason, uh, at the same time that you want the I know or subject object related you know, oriented things you get from Smack or SE Linux at the same time, for, again, for whatever reason, you should be able to do that. And uh, we want that, we, we really do want that to work. Okay. Uh, networking, again, you don't want to, to muck with systems that really have different ideas of how the network should be work, working together. So you use one network enabled module. Uh, and again, this is gonna be true into the future as people introduce new modules that do new and different interesting things. If they want to send the information across in the uh, the IP header, you really want to use keep it down to one of them because they're not going to be able to agree very often. Now, your user space I haven't talked about the user space at all, and I, that's that's on purpose because it's it can be a gnarly problem. Uh, they may a uh, user space may get confused. There are a few places where uh, interfaces may not be able to determine which security module they want to use at once. Uh, Fortunately, we do have a, a mechanism where you, where you can call cat what's in uh, sys kernel security LSM, and it will tell you the, the list of LSMs that are available. So if you're running Smack and SC Linux at the same time, you can look at that and say, oh, geez, uh, I'm going to have a, have a good time here. Uh, or if you've got AppArmor and SC Linux, you can use that to determine, make your determination about how, how your application might behave. We're also going to need to do some, some real significant updates um, in basic commands. Uh, ID, I am still unhappy that ID, if you do an ls capital Z and you don't have SE Linux configured, it will tell you that it can't do this because I've got SE, you don't have SE Linux involved. It's like, well, but the SMAC information, you can just print that, but it won't. Uh, LS is another good one. If you do an LS, an ls-z, it'll tell you the, the SC Linux context, but it really should, might want to have it do a bunch of other stuff as well. But again, this is all just kind of stuff that if somebody wanted to s spend a few minutes uh, having a good time writing some patches, they could whip that out pretty, pretty quickly here and make a big name for themselves and become famous and live the rock star lifestyle like we do. <laughs> so let's... Uh, <laughs> let's say we're going to write, write, write. Let's say you're going to write a new security module. How, who here wants to do that? <laughs> the usual suspects, um, and the guy back there. Uh, okay. So, uh, the biggest thing is networking. Um, if you're going to do networking, make it optional. Make, it, make your module work so that if you don't have networking available, by the way, this is good advice for IoT devices, if, if nothing else. Uh, if you can't use the networking either because somebody else is going to be using it or because it's not available, make it so it's optional so you don't have to have it. Read the net label code before you use it. There is somebody in this room who didn't and has been having trouble for quite some time as a result. <laughs> Not mentioning any names. Uh, and defines sane behavior, whether your, your network is labeled or unlabeled. 
whether you're in charge of the, of the security attributes or whether somebody else is, make sure that you've got same behavior defined. Uh, process attributes. Um, that we've had a big brouhaha over what, what happens with proc self adder current. Well, that's, that was my mistake. It was my bad. Um, rather than creating my own interface, I just said, oh, well, SE Linux uses current. I'll just use the same thing. Uh, well, that was a bad idea. So, I, so it would be really, really nice if each LSM had a subdirectory in their proc, proc self adder um, for their own attributes. Uh, I'm advocating that and trying to get a patch through on that one as well. Um, and the other thing is that for SO peer sec, you're probably going to want to have some user space wrapper that will around that so that you can be sure to make sure that you've set the, uh, the display LSM to the one you want before you call that in, a, in the situation where you've got stacking involved. Think twice about using sec IDs? Yeah. Do you need it? If you do, as if, you have persist, if you have persistent data, uh, you're probably, you're going to need these. And there isn't really anything we can do about that, but that just means that we make the, the sec, sec ID structure bigger. Um, it's going to go out uh, when you do tempfs, it's going to get created out that way. You're going to need to have uh, the hook to go from a sec ID to a sec context and back. Um, but it's, if you don't need it, you probably want to avoid it. Uh, tempfs uses actually the, a combination of the contexts in order to, to ma maintain the label state. Um, be careful with your state. All right. Your module hook may not get called. Uh, if somebody ahead of you in the list fails or detects a, a condition whereby they would say the system call should fail, you're not going to get called. So if you're trying to keep, you know, keep count of the number of times you, you've referenced something or the number of times you've made a, made a check on something and somebody else ahead of you is failing, you're not going to get there. If you're counting on, on a, another call to free something and you never get called, you're going to have to make sure that when you, when you deallocate that particular security blob that you're going to, to free it appropriately. Um, just because you can't really count on your being the prime, you know, being primary, you, you have you, that you always get called, uh, and avoid hanging lists off the security blobs. Uh, you can do that. It's going to require that you be careful with it. If you can just come out at, up front and say. I need this many, many bytes in the security blob. I'll let the infrastructure take care of it. You'll probably be ahead. So to wrap it up here, uh, stacks of dissimilar modules are good. We've already seen that uh, with landlock, or sorry. <clears throat> well, we've, we've talked about it today, about landlock. There's, there are several, several other security modules in the pipeline here that will do new and interesting things that are not going to be conflicting with existing existing security modules. Um, and you don't want to try to put jam that all into one, one kind of thing. You certainly don't want to put landlock, landlock eBPF into SC Linux. At least I wouldn't think you would. Um, you certainly don't want to put it into Smack. You might put it into AppArm, but uh, if stacks can avoid fighting over the network, that would be a good thing. Um, one of the tasks that Smack has on its, on our, on our, big list is let's see if we can't do a little bit better job using that label in a way that's less likely to conflict. Uh, and modules really need to color within the lines. They shouldn't be off doing bizarre things that might have, have obscure side effects that would, might cause other modules damage. Uh, and with that, I'll ask for questions. I've got one over here from Mr. Brindle, who hasn't asked me a question in years. And it's probably going to be the same one. Hi, Casey. So uh, you've been working on this for a long time. Why isn't it done? <laughs> uh, 
day job. You deserve that, though. Yes, I did. Next question. Going once. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, everybody go have a snack.